So welcome to Consulting Business School, uh, particularly welcome if it's your first time here. So this is the channel where we're talking about growing a consulting business and I'm going to share some tips from my 20, ooh, 26 years in consulting and 23 years managing my own consulting businesses. What are we going to talk about this week? How to recognize a bad client. And that's really important. Coming right up. Okay, so the topic this week is recognizing bad clients. Why is that so important? Because you actually don't want to work for them. You know, it, it's probably the hardest lesson in business, particularly if you're new to business and it's a business startup, you kind of want to grab every sale that's possible. The biggest lesson you can learn is that not all business is good business. And there are bad clients out there who will cause you such a headache, you will wish you had never worked for them. So let's talk about why they're bad and how to recognize them. Okay, um, so first of all, I'm going to just run through in no particular order here some of the attributes of bad clients and why they're bad attributes. Um, small companies and startup companies. Now look, if you have a company come to you and they say, oh look, we've just got $5 million of funding from a, you know, an angel and uh, we want you to come and help us you know, do whatever it is that you do, that's fine, but most startup businesses are working on a shoestring. Uh, they're not necessarily that good at what they're doing, um, and they can be a little bit of a nightmare to work with. They're very price sensitive. They're, they're gonna get very easily upset if, they, if there's any miscommunication or if they feel they're not getting value. Um, so they can be very difficult to work with. Um, they, what I find is that they can also be very demanding and you can get a lot of project overrun and scope creep. So you might have agreed that you know, you're, you're providing these three things as part of your consulting service and then you know, they say, oh, you know, I didn't quite understand that and I wanted this and I wanted that. So you know, small businesses and startups can be a little bit troublesome to work with. Another kind of client, and I, I still get them in Logistics Bureau after 23 years. Uh, I had one last week actually. And they contacted me on a Thursday and they said, uh, we need a proposal by Monday. Uh, here's the brief, you know, and this is like a big piece of work. And I'm thinking, why do you need this within two days? All the alarm bells go off. Why do the alarm bells go off? Because in 99% of cases, they've been sitting on it. I found that they'd been sitting on this project for two years and then suddenly someone had decided that they wanted it done. Uh, and it was all hands to the pump, you know, and we want a proposal in two days. That just screams to me that this client is going to be a nightmare to work with because they're disorganized, they're unrealistic in their uh, expectations of how long it takes to get things done. Um, yeah, look, generally when that happens, um, I kind of say to them, oh, look, we're really busy, love to be able to help you, but no thanks. Um, because nine times out of 10, it's going to end in disaster because what happens when they're in such a rush like that, uh, sometimes the project is, is very poorly defined. They're not really sure exactly what they need. You know, just that, that whole rush process doesn't provide a good foundation for working with the client generally. So that's just a red light. So small companies and startups, people who want something done in a mad rush, um, you know, we need your proposal tomorrow and we need the work done in two weeks. Mm, red, alarm bell for me. Um, another slight alarm bell is a company that's never used consultants before. And these are generally smaller businesses and again, you know, smaller and startup businesses. What, why should that be a problem? Uh, simply because they're not experienced in how the relationship works. So. Here in Logistics Bureau, we have, sorry, I should mention, this is on Consulting Business School, but my own consulting business is Logistics Bureau. We work for major corporates, and major corporates have a lot of experience in using consultants. They know how to use consultants. They bring them in to do specific bits of work. They know how to manage the relationship well. Um, they know how to collaborate with consultants to get a really good result. Um, they, they understand that sometimes, you know, timeframes might blow out a little bit, um, but they're really good to work with because they know how it all works. 
Um, if you've got someone who's never used consultants before, uh, they, they're going to be, and I actually had one uh, last year, <clears throat> it, part of a, a very big company, but the, the individual we were working for had never worked with consultants before. Um, and this lady actually turned around to me before we started the work. Uh, I just popped over to talk about the scope of the project and how we might address it. And she kind of said, do I have to pay for this meeting? <laughs> I mean, depending how you, how you manage your relationship with clients, I said, no, you know, we haven't been hired yet. I said, I'll come over as many times as you like. It's really important to um, you know, scope this work out and get our project plan and understand you know, who the key players are and who's going to do what. I said, you know, we haven't started yet. And, and I said, apart from that, you've got a fixed price for the project. You know, we've agreed here are the deliverables and there's the fixed price. I said, look, forget, you know, that question. <laughs> we don't turn on the meter every time we come over here. Uh, and that was a big sigh of relief, for her, you know. So that was, that was a good, good lesson, I suppose, in that don't suppose people understand how a consulting relationship works and just be open about it. You know, I said, hey, look, you just call me anytime. You know, it's all part of the service. So um, that lady hadn't used consultants before and was a little bit nervous about how it was all going to work. Um, the other thing that sends a little bit of an alarm bell, um, and, and this is a tricky one because you won't often know, is when the client's probably getting six or ten quotes. Um, most of our clients don't get multiple quotes. We have very good working relationships. Uh, we've worked with them for many years. They know that we're going to be very price competitive, that we're going to deliver a good service. Um, and typically it's just a case of, okay, you know, Rob, that was a great bit of work. Uh, now we need to get on with this um, and, you know, we'll put together a proposal um, and, and find that's, you know, we'll go on with it. And they know that, you know, I know that they know the sort of market price for the kind of work that we're doing and they know that I'm reasonable, we have a very good relationship and we're not going to sort of overquote. Whatever the work will cost us to do, you know, that's that's kind of what it is. So it's a really good relationship. Um, the difficulty is very often when people are getting multiple quotes. What that says to me is that do they really understand the market and do they understand the best people to go to? Don't get me wrong. I, I fully appreciate that in some big businesses and in government departments, they have to get three quotes. You know, you can't just go to one company. Um, but if they're going to like six or more, that tells me that maybe they're not sure who they should approach. Um, and do they, are they really in a position, therefore, to make a good evaluation of the proposals that come in? Do they really understand the consulting market for this type of service? Will, will they be able to differentiate between the different offers and so on? Uh, in my experience, where people are asking for a whole bunch of quotes like that, you know, sort of six or more, it's generally being driven by the procurement department and they're kind of looking to see, uh, have they quoted for everything on our brief? Yes, and then they look at the price. So they're, they're, they're maybe not as skilled as being able to differentiate the quality of the service and so on. So yeah, multiple quotes, that's a bit of an alarm bell as well. Um, so there we go, that's it. How to recognize a bad client. Um, and I'll repeat again. In the early days of your consulting business, you're going to be tempted to take every bit of work that comes your way. Please don't, uh, because some of it can derail you. You'll end up putting so much resource into a project. You know, for example, you might have quote, you might have costed it based on 20 days' work. You'll end up putting 50 days' work in. Um, you know, the, the the cost of that to you is going to be significant in in distraction and stress, and it's keeping you away from you know other better quality work. So. Do be careful, you know, in who you select as clients and remember some of those red flags. You know, if they want something done at the drop of a hat, look, in a very small number of cases, it'll be reasonable because something's happened, we need some help. But in the majority of cases, it's because they, they planned it poorly. So, you know, if they want uh, proposals turned around, you know, within a day or two, that's a red flag. Uh, if they've never used consultants before, that's a red flag. Uh, if a small startup company, that's a bit of a red flag for me. Um, and also if they're you know, getting six or seven quotes, that's a big red flag for me as well. So a few things to look out for. There are some wonderful companies to work with out there. Learn to recognize the good ones. That's the tip. So thank you for watching. And uh, as you know, videos come out every week on a Wednesday. If you want to know, want to be notified when they come out, 
uh, just make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell and that way you get an automatic uh, notification. Have you got any other red flags that you can think of for recognizing potentially bad clients? I'd love to hear your feedback. Comment down below. Um, do you think some of the ones that I suggested were unfair? I'd love to hear feedback on that too. But thank you for watching and look forward to talking to you next week. Bye for now.